Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vera and in today's video I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be doing a stationery haul. In the last couple of weeks I have acquired a lot of new stationery. Some I've purchased with my own money and others that have been gifted to me. Today I'm going to be unboxing these products, showing you what I do with these products and talking a little bit about the brands that sent them. Package number one is from Leuchtturm 1917. Now I know it says Renix Group on the front of the box and that's because in Australia we have suppliers for the brand Leuchtturm and the main supplier uh, for Leuchtturm is the Renix Group. Leuchtturm Australia reached out to me on Instagram and kindly offered to send me some products of my choice free of charge. Leuchtturm has a special place in my heart because my first ever dot grid journal was from the brand. The custom bullet journals I've done over the last few years have also been in Leuchtturm journals and I even have a series on my channel where I set up a minimalistic bullet journal for a friend in a black soft cover journal. I'll link the playlist here. So when I say I could not wait for this package, I mean it. I was super happy with the packaging, minimal waste, the packing peanuts are made of starch and can be composted, and the cardboard box can easily be reused or recycled. I picked out five different journals and the first one is this red cover ADGSM 251 pages journal. The special thing about it is that it has a blue dot grid and blue borders. This journal is for my mom who wants to start bullet journaling so I won't be unwrapping this one. I'll leave the pleasure of that to my mum. The second journal is the 120 GSM A5 dot grid journal. I was really keen to try this one because I love the paper quality from the brand but the 80 GSM is just too little for bullet journaling in my opinion. I could also have gone for the bullet journal from the bullet journal method which is also under Leuchtturm but I'm really not a fan of the colours and I also don't really like having the words bullet journal on the front of the cover. I will be swatching pens on all the journals by the way except for the red one so just stay tuned. The next journal is is a soft cover B6 journal and it's also 80 GSM. I wish they had a 120 GSM version of this one but I love it anyway and if you've been subscribed to my channel for a while you'll know that I use an A4 journal for my bullet journal at the moment and while I do love it I will be doing a review of it once I finish using it. I think that a B6 would actually be better. Anyway to show you the size difference here is the A5 journal which is the most common bullet journal size because of its ease of transport and the B6. I didn't expect the next two journals to be packaged the way they were but I was really pleasantly surprised as you can see, I tipped out the packing peanuts and the two last journals fit perfectly in the box, which is super satisfying. The first journal is a change journal and I stumbled across this one while browsing for the journals I wanted and it looked so interesting. As a self-proclaimed productivity lover, I love anything that can increase my productivity. This journal includes 24 methods with explanations and worksheets to increase your health, finances, productivity and even confidence. While it's supposed to be used as a journal, I almost don't want to write in it. I didn't realise when buying it that it came with a pen loop and a pencil, so that was a really cool surprise and I'll show you more later. The last journal from them is a some lines a day memory journal. You're supposed to write a few lines every day for five years. I first saw one of these ages ago but never bought into them because I was always moving from place to place. I realize now that having one might actually have been pretty cool but anyway my friend Harmony on Instagram, I'll link her Instagram here, shared this one and when I saw that Leuchtturm had one I had to pounce on it because now I'm interested. Here's a few clips of me attaching the pen loops to the journals. Say what you will about pen loops, I think it's cool to have the choice not to have one, but because they came with the journal, I decided to add them on. For the Sunlines of Day journal, it came with a pen and it is this really cool twisty pen. It's nice and small and compact and I really hope that it lasts for the five years for that I use this journal, but I guess we'll find out at the end of five years. I'll hopefully do a review of this journal in five years time, if I'm still doing this in five years time. <laughs> Let's have a closer look now at the Sunlines a Day journal. Here's the cover. I chose the blue one, but there are also a few other colors, which you can find on the website, which I'll link down below. I've added the pen loop and the pen to the side. The journal has an elastic to hold it together, and this is what the pages look like. I did think it was going to have ruled pages, and originally I was a bit disappointed, but upon further inspection, not having lines lets you write as big or small as you need to fill up the space. It's cool too because you have a 20, but not the year, so you can start whenever you want. The journal has a small back pocket, but if I'm honest, I hardly ever use those. There are two ribbons, as is pretty common for any journal these days, but these ones are stuck together. I find that with Louis Term, this happens quite 
quite often. I've decided to start in April, and while that does leave the first three months blank, it just means that I'll keep going through to 2027. And talking about 2027 seems so weird to me. The pages are quite transparent, but to be fair, if you need to fit 365 pages into a journal, you kind of need them to be thin, or your journal will be really fat. I wrote the start of the year in the journal and decided to leave the end year blank. Because let's be honest, do I really think I will stay consistent over five years? I mean, I really hope so, but I guess we'll find out. Here I'm just showing you how transparent the pages are and how much I was able to write and fit on in the first day and I'm pretty happy with that. The next journal is the Change Journal. I chose the colour pink because I wanted different colours for all the journals and it has the standard elastic band in the back pocket. This one also came with a pen loop and a pencil. Two ribbons and here's a sort of flip through of the journal. Here's an example of one of the pages. It talks about rewards for small tasks, medium tasks, and big tasks. It gives you space to write out the ideas on the following pages. What's cool is that you can head to the changejournal.com website, and if you run out of templates to use for each of the methods, you can download a new template and continue using it. You could also decide to redo the templates by hand in your bullet journal, which is potentially something that I would do. Here's a quick comparison of the journal sizes. The baby pink one is the standard Lewish Term 1917 journal, and the wine pink one is the 120 G. This 120 GSM journal is also a big favourite of mine. I've already talked a bit about this one, so let's get straight into it. I wanted to look at the binding because all Archer and Olive journals lay flat when you open them, but from memory the Leuchtturm 80 GSM ones didn't when I started using them, so I'm flipping through to different pages to see how it lies and I'm happy to say that it lies flat. Here's what it looks like next to an Archer and Olive journal. The pages are creamier than the a &O. In terms of page texture, I think Leuchtturm is slightly softer, which long term for brush pens is better, but I've been using a &O with brush pens and haven't had any problems, so it's personal preference as of right now. Another thing I I realized was this journal doesn't have the signature perforated pages at the back of the journal that I'm used to seeing in their 80 GSM journals. I'm slightly disappointed, but I guess I don't always use them anyway. Let's now do a pen test. I'm going to swatch a bunch of brush pens to show you the paper quality. We've got the Tombow Fudenosuke Pentel brush pen, and here's what happens on the back of the page. You can see some light ghosting, but no bleedings of the pen. The next pen is the Ecoline brush pen, which is notoriously watery, and that one didn't bleed through at all, so I'm very happy with that. There is some light ghosting, but I'm not fussed. Next, an Archer and Olive Calligraph pen, a Tombow Jewel brush pen, Crayola Super Tips, and for these three, there's minimal ghosting and no bleeding. A Stabilo permanent marker, Posca paint pens, and an Archer and Olive acrylograph. And we have the same thing for these pens as well. I will be swatching the exact same pens on all of the journals, by the way. I also decided to test the watercolor on the paper with the first one just one swipe, and the second one is how many layers of water can the paper hold. I'm pretty impressed with how everything held up. I did seven layers of watercolor and could have done a few more, I think. The page didn't start fluffing up and it didn't bleed through. All in all, I'm very impressed with this journal and cannot wait to use it. I'd give it a solid. 9 out of 10. Let's quickly move on to the 80 GSM one. Now I know this one is going to have some serious ghosting and bleeding, but let's see which pens do. So the Tombow Fudenosuke and the Pentel brush pens ghost a lot, but there's no bleeding. Surprisingly, the Ecoline brush pen only ghosts, no bleeding. Next, the Archer and Olive Calligraphs and Tombow Jewel brush pen, and the Calligraphs bleed straight through, so I wouldn't use those pens with this journal at all. The Tombow just ghosts, the Crayola Super Tip bleeds a little bit, but not as heavy as the Calligraphs. The Stabilo permanent marker goes straight through, never use this pen on these pages. The Posca paint pen and Acrylograph only ghost, and the paper can hold seven layers of watercolor like its 120 GSM partner, but the page warping is a lot more significant. I would give this journal possibly a seven out of 10, but I do love the color and I'm still in love with the journal. So yeah, I think the only downside is the ghosting and the bleeding, but the paper quality is still really, really good. And I will happily use this journal for bullet journaling if I had no other option. Box number two is from Archer and Olive. Now this is the March subscription box and I had previously paused my subscription because the themes that they had been releasing were not exactly my vibe, but when a yellow box came out with beautiful theme, I had to jump back onto it. So I did get this one. This beautiful yellow box has several items in it. The first small box is the enamel pins and they are stunning. Or the enamel bookmarks, sorry. The packaging is so gorgeous. My only qualm is that it's a jaguar and not a tiger. But that's not really an issue. The only reason I thought about it is because I'm born in the year of the tiger, so it would have been pretty cool to have a tiger. 
but this box fits really nicely with my January theme, which you can check out on my Instagram because I didn't film it for YouTube. Next are these die cut stickers, they're super cute and I'll be putting them in some of my pen pals for sure. My favourite item though is this notepad because it has three colours and they're still dot grid paper. Also the, I think it's the 160 GSM as well. The next one are these colouring pages but the cool thing is that the packaging can also be used as a stencil or for scrap paper for journaling or scrapbooking. Next are the Calligraph pens and I've been waiting to get my hands on a set of these and they did not disappoint. I'll be swatching every single one of these pens later by the way, but you did get a sneak peek of one of these pens when I was swatching in the Lois Home journals earlier. Up next is washi tape and the designs are so, so nice. I'm obsessed, I've been getting obsessed with washi tape lately and in my next package, I'll also show you some more that I received. We then have this beautiful journal. It has perforated pages, so really interesting concept. I would have preferred having some perforated pages at the back like Louis Term does, but I guess that's copying Louis Term too much, but I don't know. I think their system or their the way of having the pages at the back is it's still cooler than having an entire journal of perforated pages because then I would just prefer having a notepad instead of a notebook. Lastly, we have this tote bag and it is huge. I think it's more of a picnic bag than a stationary bag, but I do love it. I haven't had a chance to take it out for a spin yet, but I reckon I will be using it as a picnic bag. When I use stationary bags, I just put everything into my backpack and everything fits and everything has its space because that's just the way I've worked it out with my backpack. Bag. So I can't imagine myself switching to a different bag and also my stationery is precious and I do not want anyone to steal any stationery So with all these open pockets, I feel like I'd just be heartbroken if someone just took something out of it Let's swatch the pens on the journal now. There are five colors and they're parakeet, jungle green, blue lagoon, marsh green, and toucan orange. Now the pens have two sides to them, a large fat brush pen like the Tombow Jewel brush pen, but instead of having a kind of like a thin tip fine liner on the other side, it has a smaller brush pen like you would find on the Pentel brush sign pens. And I think this concept is so interesting. Uh, I'm not sure how I personally feel about it. I do like having the option to have the same color in different sizes. So I guess in the end, I am pretty happy with it. The Toucan Orange, however, has two kind of different colors and I'm not sure if this was intentional or not. I can't remember. I think there was something written about it, but I do prefer the yellower color instead of to the orange one just because yellow is my favorite color. This is what the washi tape looks like and I'm also going to do a quick washi tape swatch. So I'm just gonna lie them on the page and then I'm going to do this same pen test. Now, because I've been using an Archer and Olive journal for the longest time, I can tell you that there's going to be hardly any ghosting or bleeding from any of the pens, but we can try it out anyway. I think the only pen that ghosts a little bit is the Ecoland brush pen, um, but that brush pen happens to ghost on any single paper that you use because of its such a watery texture. The watercolor also holds up very well on this journal and I would know because I've used watercolor on this journal before. All in all, I would also give this journal maybe an eight out of 10 only because I'm not a fan of the perforated pages throughout the whole journal. And I think that makes me like it less than having ghosting on pages. So this journal is not my favorite, but I do love the design and I will happily use this journal as a bullet journal sometime in the future. I'm just a little bit worried that with time that with and wear and tear, that the pages will just naturally fall out by themselves which would be kind of annoying so I'm a bit hesitant to start using this journal for anything bullet journal related but I'll let you know and then another one is from Express It now I've already thrown the box out because I've technically already unboxed it but I have a few things that I will show you including some of these products here now this company reached out to me to send me some products to try out, including a journal, gold foiling, some glue to use with the gold foiling, some copper metal leafs to also use with the glue, and three different kinds of washi tapes, or like not three different kinds, but like three times five, and some Ecoline brush pens, which you would have seen me use and swatch in the previous journals. This was such a cool package. I didn't know what they were going to send me, so this was really nice opening it up because with the other two packages that you've already seen me unbox, I already knew what was going to be inside. So having this kind of little surprise was just extra exciting. I am going to do a video where I swatch washi tape more closely uh, and give you different fun ways of swatching it. So stay tuned for that video. Here you can already have a little sneak peek of what I mean. So let's start by comparing the pages on these journals. 
So here I'm just going to compare it to a Leuchtturm journal and an Archer and Olive journal because those are the ones I have next to me. Now you can see that the dots on the Expressit journal are a lot fatter than the ones on Leuchtturm and Archer and Olive. So this is kind of annoying. They're also a bit darker and they also seem blurrier. So I wouldn't use the Expressit journal for bullet journaling specifically. However, I reckon this journal is a lot cheaper. So price is also something to take into consideration. I have decided to use the Express It journal as a swatching journal where I will swatch every single one of my pens and all of my washi tape because even though the dots are really large the paper is still quite smooth and I know that it won't damage any of my brush pens or pens. Another reason I'm using this as my swatching book is because the journal itself is also a lot thinner than most of my other journals which means that it's more transportable, it's easier to use and I don't have so many pens that I would fill up a huge journal so this particular size is perfect for this. So let's run through all the pens, the same pens as always. Now with most of these pens, there is ghosting. The Calligraph pens bleed. Tombow jewel brush pens don't. Crayola Super Tips just ghost. The Stabilo permanent marker bleeds through, but not as heavily as on the ADGSM journal from Leuchter. The Posca paint pen and the Acrylograph don't bleed, they do ghost. For the watercolor, it can hold up watercolor. However, as you'll see with my brush going over the same spot multiple times, it just starts to fluff up around it. So I could only do five layers before it started kind of deteriorating the page. So I would definitely not use any watercolor in this journal. Here's a final comparison of all of the journals that I've done pen tests on. And of course, in in terms of ghosting, the Archer and Olive journal is the best. There's absolutely no ghosting. In terms of watercolor though, I will say that I think I prefer using a Leuchtturm journal for watercolor because it seems to hold it better with the paper quality. In terms of colors, so the Archer and Olive is like a pure white, whereas the other ones are a creamy eggshell white. I'm not sure what I prefer. It's really up to you. I am happy with both, to be honest, I think. They're both very aesthetic. The thing that I will say is that with Leuchtturm, it feels like a more professional journal because there's nothing on the front. There's no little cute symbols. So if you're more in more of a professional setting where you want to have a journal, then I would go towards Leuchtturm. But if you are happy to have these little cute symbols on your journal uh, and really fun colors as well, I mean, Leuchtturm also has nice colors, but like really out there colors, then Archer and Olive is for you. And if you happen to want to buy a journal from Archer and Olive, I do have a discount code it is an affiliate code it's vero10 for a 10% discount and if you do use my code I do get a small commission of no extra charge to you I am now an affiliate for Leuchtturm Australia which is so so exciting and you can use code vero20 for a one-time only 20% discount on your very first order with Leuchtturm and then if you want to continue buying from Leuchtturm you can use vero10 on your next purchase for a perpetual 10% discount on Leuchtturm. So again, I am an affiliate. So when you buy something using my code, I do get a kickback. So if you do use that, thank you so, so much. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed. If you want to see more stationary videos, you can check out my video where I did a room tour and five different ways to renew your spaces completely free, where I will show a little bit more of the stationary products that I have. That's it for today and I'll see you in another video. Bye-bye.